Hello Reason users, this is Edouard from Synaptic Machines. This is my first tutorial and I'm going to talk about a topic which is quite complicated but actually quite simple. It is sidechain EQing. So to exemplify this I prepared two tracks. You can have here a kick and a bass, which is actually a synth bass. I use anti dot synths for that. Let's listen. Oh, we got to go back. So a very simple track indeed. Not much interesting, but a good example of what I want to show you. So in each of the tracks I integrated the spectrum analyzer. Let's have a look. What you can notice is that the frequency zone of the kick around 80 Hz, 100 Hz is overlapping that of the synth. So with two track it doesn't seem to be a problem but if I have a complex uh, mix and I'm doing my frequency mix, I will want to isolate these two frequencies. I will actually cut here the bass. So that would change the tonality and the feel of my track, though so that's not maybe a good idea. So what I could do is to do sidechain compression. I would use this the kick as a source and uh, apply a compressor on this with the sidechain to the kick. What it will do each time the kick hits the volume of the synth bass will be decreased but over all the frequencies. But if you listen to this case, you also have high frequencies. I want to leave them untouched. Basically I want the kick to pilot a compressor to block, to limit only the frequencies which are overlapping with that of the kick. So basically it's applying an EQ on the band here for the bass triggered by the kick. It's very important to do that because it won't change the tonality of the whole mix and it will allow you to have a louder track when you enter the mastering phase. So let's start applying stuff. So first I will divide the audio of the kick. I press shift each time to get uh, control on the, the routing. And I will send it to the tr oops. We send it to the track. Now I'll create a compressor. I will use a master class. Uh, it's not my favorite. Far from there, but uh, like this, everyone knows what we're talking about. And I send the audio into the input. So when I launch the kick, you can see here the gain reduction being applied to the compressor by the compressor. I haven't sent it to any uh, the audio output anywhere and I won't. What I'm interested in is this section, the gain reduction signal. Each time the kick uh, hits, there will be a spike in the voltage of this output. So what I do, I will create here a combinator. And in the combinator I will insert an EQ. I don't press shift this time because I wanted the connections to, to be done. Now I will send the gain reduction signal to Rotary 1 of the combinator and then assign Rotary 1 to the parametric gain, where is it, of the first band that I will enable. So if you look what happens, you see each time the kick hits something happens into this frequency zone. Now the, the CV signal is positive so what I want is actually to invert it, inverse it. Now here what we have, that's what we have. The sim cleaning. Now note that the problem is that it doesn't go back to zero, so I can actually 
change this setting to get it back to the value I want. Voilà. So now I don't have anything happening on the synth because I'm not connected. So I'll connect the synth to where is the synth? Here. To the combinator and the combinator goes back into the synth track. Now I can play with the synth please. I will move the kick so you can hear the effect. You can see this variation. Uh, it's uh, occurring in the middle of the band. What I'm interested in is having it here. It's quite interesting. You can actually see what's happening to the compressor, how it acts. I I'm going to show you an example. I'm going to decrease the tempo. I put the kick back. And if I take the release time, for instance, I take it very small, look at how it comes back to zero, very fast. If I take a long release time, look the the, the band going slowly up to zero. So you actually can see what's happening. I'm going back to a normal tempo. And I can also play on threshold. Actually, I'm observing in real time what the compressor is doing. I think it's quite fun. Now, le let's listen to to actually uh, the synth itself, and because it's difficult in the low frequency range to to get a, a good feel of what's going on audio, in the audio. I mean, so I'm going to insert here in the synth an equalizer. I'm going to use for instance the trilo. I'm removing all the bases. Now I'm going to remove the kick. You can hear the fluctuations. And you can hear the fluctuations on other zones, for instance, if I remove if I move the frequency band. Give you a good example. I'm going to go and put this, boost this up a bit. Now, in the in the one kilohertz region, you can really hear clearly the effect. If I move it, no more effect. It will affect actually the low frequency now. Maybe I moved it a bit too far. So by doing this, I'm actually applying sidechain compression just on a small band. And this is very valuable when one wants to do a frequency mix and want to keep the tonality of other different instruments uh, one is mixing. Voila, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. I would like to, to thank Selig, Ben Fracar, and Willem Dubstep, which are the guys that uh, helped me uh, figuring this out uh, by discussion on the Propeller Head Forum. That was Edouard from Synaptic Machines. Uh, I wish you good reasoning and uh, I will finish with a little extract of one of my tracks. Bye bye!
satellites, can't just say the arm 